Good day and greetings from the Great White North. My name is Prickly Poo and welcome to day 48 of A Year of Change. Um, we're getting closer and closer to a milestone, um, but I don't want to keep bringing that up every single video because it just sort of cuts time off. Um, I don't really have an idea of what to do for today because we're going to sort of start new stuff. Um, normally at this stage I would probably tell a story of some sort, but... Well, I can sort of do that, because I do have something that happened yesterday. Um, I just sort of wanted to address the scheduling thing with the videos. There's, I'm trying to get to a point where I record a video at the same time every single day. Um, and then, for a little bit, I was trying to do it ahead of time, so it was going up the next day. And then, when I would say yesterday, it meant two days ago. And things just got all wonky. So, I'm posting this on a Friday, and I'm shooting it on a Friday. Shooting it. I'm doing it now, on a Friday morning. So I'm going to try to maybe do that just because it's easier because trying to figure out today and yesterday and tomorrow and everything else and keep things in order um, is just going to end up being confusing for me and not going to make any sense to you. I noticed that in yesterday's video when I was saying, oh, well, yesterday I did this and the day before, but it wasn't that yesterday. It was Tuesday instead of anyway. So it is Friday. While you're watching this, hopefully, it's Friday while this is being posted, and it's Friday while I'm doing this right now. So, we're going to try to going to try to try keep it um, every day. I'm going to try to do it in the morning as well, before work, um, just because I think it's a little easier that way. And then I can always say, oh, well, yesterday I did this, you know, when something happens during the day. So, um, yesterday I did bleh. So, um, before I get to that, though, um, started, got up this morning again. Did my treadmill, so, um, and again, only doing about half an hour of a walk, just to sort of, I was hoping to wake myself up, but it really didn't work, I'm still very tired, but I want to sort of get into that, so that three days a week I'm doing that, and then gradually move my way up, which leads me into my story from yesterday, because I've mentioned this many, many times, the big hill at work, which I know I'm going to end up, eventually end up having to park on, um, they sent out a notice at work yesterday, we have like a, I guess it's like a, an internal Facebook sort of thing that everyone goes and they post things about work and say, oh, this is great, oh, congratulations on your whatever. But they sent out this thing that basically said any person that is parking up on the hill, you know, go in and hit the like button or do a hashtag of something so that it was for the wellness committee or something so that people will know when you get your name put in a draw. That's how big it is. And they refer to it as the mountain. So it's not just me. There are hundreds of other people that are referring to this place as well as the mountain. So I was looking at it going, yeah, well, this is probably good timing because I'm starting to do my uh, exercise stuff and I'm probably going to go for another week before I try doing the hill um, because just doing it for three days and then having to park up there every day is going to be horrible. So I want to sort of get used to it. And... I ended up talking to someone yesterday about uh, just progress that we've been doing and things like that and what my plan is. And it's, I don't want to turn this into a nasty comment because it's not that they were mean or anything. Um, but they were saying, well, why don't you park on your hill or mountain or whatever it is? Because I've told them about this as well. And I said, well, eventually I'm going to because I'm going to be doing you know, I, I have a plan. And they say, well, no, you should do it now. Like, no, it's, I have, I have things mapped out. And again, the, what came across was just, they didn't get it. Um, they're one of these people that they've always been in shape. They've always been not thin, but they haven't ever been fat. And it was just sort of one of those things that as I was talking to them, I understood they just aren't understanding. Um, and it's not, I mean, some of it is probably laziness. Um, I was talking to someone else about this as well. That part of it is laziness. That is like, no, I'm not quite ready for that. I know how bad it is going up. And I want to get at least something under my belt um, so that it's sort of, I can meld it into it and be part of it. Instead of just saying, all right, well, today I'm going to climb a mountain five times a week. It's just ridiculous. But they were saying, no, just, and at one point even said, you know, we should run up it just so that you get, you know, your heart pumping. And you would think, you know, that even just talking to them, like, that's not me, obviously. And 
to them, I'm sure it seems so easy to just say, well, just do it. It's the same sort of mentality as someone saying, well, just don't eat donuts. Like, just if you're going to have something, then have a donut. They, you don't get it. You, you can't... I mean, obviously you can, um, if I put my mind to it and did all that stuff and just said, okay, well, today I'm going to start working out six hours a day. That's how they get stuff done on, you know, the reality shows, like The Biggest Loser, which is something that you don't really see when you watch those. Um, people say, oh, my God, they lost so much weight. Yeah, because they literally work out between four to six hours every day to the point when, you know, they're running till they barf. They restrict their calories down to almost nothing. It's an extreme diet and extreme weight loss. And I'm sure if you went back, you know, two, three years after each show, then the person's like, no, I didn't stay with it at all because it was ridiculous. It was horrible. Yes, I lost the weight, but no. So that's why we're doing this the way that we're doing it, just very, very slowly so that when we do make changes, we will stick with it because we know if we don't have those tiny changes, if we say, no, today I'm going to, I'm just going to stop eating junk food, you're just going to, you're not going to stick with it because it's an addiction. It's like smoking or alcohol or anything else. It's, we're addicted to food, whether it's overeating or just eating bad foods. It is, it's the same thing. So doing the exercise portion of it, which is laziness, um, you know, on my part, but I, I'm, you know, the fact that we are starting something, um, and I mean, you'll get to this point in a couple of weeks when we actually start doing exercise. The fact that we're starting something and doing more than we were doing before is an improvement. And when you talk to someone who hasn't dealt with being fat or someone who, you know, exercises on a regular basis, and I'm sure at some point, people that were fat and now aren't, and, you know, they've gone sort of the other way. And they seem to forget what it was like. Um, you know, they don't understand that it's it's saying to someone, you know, well, just just start running, just do it. It's like you don't understand. It's fine. That's how you're dealing with something. But when you're talking to them, and they say something like that, they might as well just be looking at you and saying, "Oh, well, you're you're losing weight. You're starting exercise. You've been watching what you're eating for 48 days. That's not good enough." You need to do this now. Well, fuck you. Because you know what? What we've been doing for the past 48 days is a massive improvement over what we've been doing for the past, you know, however many years beforehand. <clears throat> and to try to explain that to someone who isn't in our situation is really discouraging because you just, it's never going to be good enough. You could say to someone, you know what, I've, I've cut up junk food and I started exercising and, you know, I have lost 10 pounds. They'll say, well, you should be, you know, running and doing weight training and you should start cutting out salt as well and no carbs and no bread and don't touch trees and don't look at clouds and don't touch anything rusty. It's never good enough. So, and I mean, I knew that there was going to be that aspect of this, that when we started this, we were going to be talking with people, whether it's in the comments or talking to them in real life or on the the group, that it's just, they're going to say, well, why don't you do this and this and this? And and some people do it out of a, a sort of an attempt to help. They'll say, oh, well, you should try this and have like steamed rice with you know blanched broccoli and everything else. And some people, it comes from, you know, a, sort of that a good intention and for some people, it just comes across as being asinine. That they're saying, you know what? No, do this and do this. You have to start kicking things. It's like, no, it's, you know what? We've been doing sh shit for 45 or 50 days and it's working. We are tracking our foods. We're looking at long term. Like, yes, it's going to take us a year when we could very easily, not easily, but we could in theory just say good enough. No more sugar, no more salt. We're going to start eating very healthy, no more processed foods, no more junk food, and we're going to be exercising for an hour every single day for cardiovascular and an hour for weight training five days a week. We're going to take the time to do it. We all know we would never stick with it. If we could do that, then we would have done it already, and we wouldn't be in the shape that we're in. So 
for any of you out there that have tried to explain to someone, look, here's what I've been doing for 40 days or however long that you've been doing this. And they're like, oh, well, you should do this and this and this. Ignore it. Fine, listen to them, smile and nod, but stick with what you're doing because what you're doing is working. They won't understand. They won't get it because to them, these are just almost non-existent steps. Going up to someone who's already thin and saying, yes, I'm not overeating. I'm not eating cookies and candies by the bag full every single day. That's nothing to them. So it, I understand where they're coming from saying, well, you should do this and this and this. No, I'm not going to run up a fucking mountain because you say so. I'm not going to cut out all salt and sugar and everything else because you say so. We have a plan. And so far, it's working. And we've got a huge chunk of it done already. We actually have a lot of the harder parts done because we've, we've changed the way that we're eating. We're changing the amount that we're eating. We've added water. We've added vegetables. We're looking at alternatives so that we aren't always grabbing chips or cakes or whatever it is to snack on. These are huge changes that we've done. And you should be proud of it. And I'm not one of those people to say, oh, well, good for you. You should be proud because you're you. No, you've accomplished something. Like, applause is due when you know, you've accomplished something. You're not going to get congratulated by me if you, know, you haven't done anything and you've just been watching this. And, you know, you haven't taken any steps to improve things because it's not worth it. It's like trying to congratulate someone for just doing their regular job. Um, no, that's your job. This is why you're watching this so that you can start working on things and, you know, improving how you are. And so the fact that you've gone this far is worth a congratulations. It is something that you should be proud of because it's... It's a huge step. You've made big changes, some of us more than others. Um, there are going to be some of you out there that had a really hard time just drinking plain water for a change. And maybe you're adding crystal light to it or whatever you're doing to get some flavor into it or the little drops or whatever, which is fine. Some of you, it's going to be the vegetable thing. Now, I've been drinking water for the, that's usually the, about 90% of what I drink anyway for years so that wasn't a huge change for me and with vegetables i really enjoy those so i eat them all the time with everything that i have so that's not a big change for me um the exercise is going to be um just trying to get back into that cutting down on the amount that i'm eating and st i'm still having there are still some things that like, every now and then when i come home i'll say okay well i have this many calories well, my meal doesn't encompass all the leftover calories. It's going to be, you know, like a regular size meal or a regular calorie count. But I find I'm still preparing too much food. And it's just from force of habit because I'm looking at it going, no, this should be enough. And what I'm finding is that um, it's, it's still slightly too much for me to eat at this stage, which is actually a good thing. Um, but not that I'm overeating still, but, you know, which is... Obviously I am, but <laughs> because if I, if I was just cutting things out, then I would be doing 1200 calories a day or whatever it is and I'd be fine. But it is an accomplishment that you should be proud of. And I just find that I'm going to start repeating myself again here. I do find that when you're talking to someone who doesn't understand it, who isn't in the same boat, and even some people who are, that I've had some people that, you know, are just as big as I am, um, that are giving me pointers but they aren't doing this. They aren't doing, they aren't changing the way they eat. They aren't changing their eating habits or anything like that. They're saying, oh, well, you should try this and this and this. And like, okay, well, you know, just again, sort of smile and nod and say, good enough. I'm, you know, I have a plan and it's working so far. And we're looking at a year down the road. It'll still be working, I think. So when you talk to those people, you know, it's every now and then you are going to get someone that's going to encourage you and just simply say, you know, good for you. Do something, follow along with it, whatever works. If it's working for you, then stick with it. You know, you can do it. Those are the ones that are going to be helpful. It's the ones that say, oh, well, you should try this and this and this. It's like, it's, it's not good enough, apparently, that, you know, you're making a change that you are improving, just not improving quickly enough. And that's the attitude that sort of comes across. And there is that real risk that it could be really discouraging that you can sit there and think, you know, maybe I'm not doing enough. Maybe I should 
do this or do more or maybe I should like on my treadmill maybe I should be just sort of starting right in with uh, five kilometers a day again that's what I was doing before but again I'd rather be going too slowly than too quickly because we know that when we go too quickly you are all gung-ho when we first start these things and in our heads we think no this time I'm going to stick with it I'm going to stay you know stay the course and do what I need to do and inevitably we don't otherwise you wouldn't be watching this you would have succeeded on the last time that you did it or the time before that or the time before that so I would much rather be going too slowly and think ah, I could probably pick it up a bit but I'm gonna wait instead of going too fast and then saying I'm exhausted I'm gonna cut back to three days a week because then it's easy for me to cut back to one day a week and then it's easy enough for me just to use my treadmill as a coat rack again which I really don't want to do I bought it a while ago probably I don't know if it was a year maybe even two years ago um, and now I think it was hmm no, I think it was, oh, I don't know, it was one or two years ago that I bought it. And that'll give you an idea of how little I use it. And it's basically, it's a, a $2,000 coat rack. It's a waste of money, and I want to get my money's worth out of it. And I had all these grand plans when I started doing this and saying, oh, well, I want to be able to go here and here and here. So I've got it attached to this, and I have, you know, a, a chip in my running shoes and everything else. And just gradually slid back out of it and I don't want to do that again so it was one of those things that with this conversation I had yesterday that I'm probably not going to bring this up to that person ever ever again um, just because I don't want to hear their suggestions <laughs> for lack of a better term because it's not helpful um, it might work for them which is great but they're used to you know going outside and doing playing sports or mountain climbing or whatever it is that they do and aside from being able to say i i'm not going to run up a 45 degree angle for five minutes straight it's just I mean, I mean that sounds like a minuscule amount of time but to some people yes they do it because they're like oh i feel great it gets my heart running and everything else I think if I did it, my heart would probably explode to begin with. Um, I really don't think, you know, I would just assume that if I was to run up the hill, if I was to park up there, which I will eventually do when I feel that it's an appropriate time. Um, but if I was to park up there, say today, and then run up at the end of work, then tomorrow morning when I started filming, I would still be out of breath and more than likely would still be able to hear my heart. And I just... It would be very disconcerting to see me in a video just saying, I don't think I should be able to hear my heart humming because it's beating so fast and then pass out and people don't find me for weeks. So if the videos ever do just stop, um, give it a few days <laughs> because chances are I haven't just dropped dead. This would be really creepy though if two or three months down the road the videos do just stop all of a sudden and then... It never comes back because, and then people say, oh no, Pooh's dead. He died while he was running up a hill for some odd reason. Um, anyway, not to be morbid, <laughs> getting back on track. Um, yeah, when you get uh, kind of those conversations with those people, um, sort of smile and nod, thank them because to them, they're trying to help. And they're saying, you know, this will get you there faster. Don't worry about it. Don't take that under advisement. We aren't trying to do this quickly. Um, this isn't a program where we can say lose 20 pounds in 10 days. We don't want to do that because that is simply a diet. This is not a diet. This is a fundamental change in our lives that's going to be permanent if we do this right. So, I mean, you don't have to be nasty to them. They are probably trying to help um, in their own stupid way. But just sort of take it, smile, nod, and at least that way you know never to bring it up again. Like with this person, I'm, I'm never going to bring up this topic with them again because there's no point. Because no matter what I say, no matter what stage we're going to be at, I could be there six months um, or I could be at the six month mark and meet them in the street somewhere and say, oh, well, here's an update. I'm now running five miles a day and I'm, you know, I'm down to 1200 calories. I've got a vegan diet and I've cut out all sugar, all carbs and everything's great. And they'll say, really, well, you should train for the marathon that's coming up because, you know, you need to start learning how to run 26 miles. It will never be good enough for them. Um, it's just because people seem to, I don't know, I don't know if it's a matter of them wanting to help 
or just saying, you know what, you're, it comes across as them saying, <clears throat> you're still too fat, whatever you're doing isn't working, obviously. Well, it is. Um, we're slowly losing weight, whether it's one or two pounds a week, whatever you're losing, if you are still, I mean, you might still be maintaining until you still sort of tweak things. But there have been a, a number of large changes that we've done that, well, a number of small changes, which have sort of compounded. They are greater than the sum of their parts. There you go. Here's a nice little thing. So when you have that, there's a motorcycle outside. I don't know if you can hear it. It might be messing things up. Just ignore that noise. Um, that And it it's completely lost my train of thought. Just one little traction. Like, ah, motorbike. Um, anyway, so I'm going to sort of cut things off because I was in the middle of a sentence and now I don't know what I was going to say. Um, it might have been the helpful thing. But you have made changes. Oh, some greater than the sum of their parts. That's where I was. So all these little changes, um, as they go on through the end of the year, they are going to make a huge difference. So take your time, follow along with me, and we're going to go through this at the same pace. Some of you might think, okay, well, I'll add one or two little things here, but if it gets to a point where you are thinking this is too hard, come back to where we are. Because again, I'd much rather things go too slowly than, you know, and you stick with it then it go too quickly and you quit. So I'm really hoping that as you're watching this, you know, that, well, that the majority of people are still watching this. I hate to think that we've lost some people in the first, before that we even hit 50, which is going to be rough. But with everyone else that you're talking to, if you do have someone that you can talk to that is supportive and not necessarily give, you know, giving you lip service and just saying, oh, well, good for you, keep it going and stuff. But if it's, there's a genuine interest there, or, you know, if they're, if they're offering things that are helpful and saying, well, here's what I did that, I, that worked for me, take it or leave it, however their advice is, but don't latch on to something, even stuff that I tell you, don't latch on to something and say, well, that's what I need to do from now on. Um, and like I say, if you run into someone that does that, just do what I do. Don't bring it up to them again because it's just... You know it's going to be a negative, I mean, it's not necessarily a nasty conversation, but it's going to be a negative con uh, conversation with them, and they're not going to get it. Um, not to badmouth people that are thin, but they aren't going to understand what it's like. They aren't going to understand that, yes, it's simply a matter of willpower, but we have none, which is why we're doing this. So, um, that is sort of my story from yesterday. Um, I was... I'm going to tell another bus story, but I think we're running short on time. We are at, oh, we're over 20 minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we will save that. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow because tomorrow is the end of our week and day 49, and then we will hit day 50. Um, and, you know, I don't know. We're going to be starting a new week. It's not, not a major change, I don't think, on this one. Um, we have another couple of weeks or one or two weeks. I think it's at the end, the beginning of week nine that we might start the exercise stuff. That'll give me three weeks um, under my belt, so I'll sort of be able to gauge that. Um, don't get scared, though. Again, I keep saying this over and over again. It's going to be something very small. It's going to be something that everyone is going to be able to do. Um, I shouldn't say that. If you are... Well, literally, the only way that this isn't going to work is if you are paralyzed from like the neck down. Even mid-chest down, you'll still be able to do something. So, and I'm not saying that to try to be funny. I sincerely mean it. You're still going to be able to do something. Um, so it's, you know, unless it's like Stephen Hawking sort of thing, wouldn't be able to do to do this. But it's going to be something very, very small, very, very easy to sort of get into and very smoothly ease into it. I said ease and easy at the same time or in the same sentence, close to each other. Anyway, I'm going to stop this video now because I'm going to start babbling even more than I am. Um, bit of a depressing story, I'm sorry, but take it as it is. Um, there are still some positive parts to it. At least you know not to bring it up to that person again. And you have other people that you can talk to that are going to be supportive and are going to understand what you're going through. And aren't going to try to offer, you know, bullshit advice that isn't really helpful in the long run. So take that as you will. Hopefully everyone has someone that they can talk to. And if not, you can always talk to us. Come back to us on the comments. Come uh, talk to me in uh, you know in our My Fitness Pal group. And 
you know, at least you have someone there, and at the very least, you can still watch these and understand that there is someone out there who, you know, looks like you, and you may not be bald, but you know what I mean. The same size as you, or bigger, and who understands that it is going to be a struggle. But we still have a year left, like almost an entire year to go through to get it done. So we've got plenty of time, and it is going to work. I hope. It will. I think it will. Anyway, for now, thank you very much for watching the video. If you liked it, please poke the like button for me. And in the meantime, keep yourself warm and fuzzy, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.